on you, Fatty. Let's get straight into it. I've got an illustrious panel tonight. Ray Hadley, 2GB broadcaster. Great to have you back yeah. on board, mate. Great to see you. David Middleton, stats guru. Extraordinary. Yeah. Great to have you on Five yeah. in the Bin for the first time. Also our first time for Nathan Hindmarsh. Great to have you on Five in the Bin. And a regular on this show now, Benji Marshall is back. Big cheers for Benji tonight. And in the cave, as always, the big man. How are you travelling up there, big man? Very good, thanks, Slats. All good. You ready Thank to you. go? I'm ready, fired up and ready to go. All right, I'm looking forward to this first one. Well, back in 1981, Rugby League Week started the most exclusive club, one of the most exclusive in Australian sport, you'd have to say, and it's all to do with the Immortals. There have been seven inducted, and we are ready for the eighth. There's no doubt about it. The last one back in 2003... Artie Beetson. So who will it be? I open it up to you, Ray. Well, I'm on the judging panel with 12 other people and I don't really know. It's a very difficult decision. Um, the one thing that I, I'm a bit uh, dubious about, I, I read in Rugby League Week today that um, Darren Lockyer can't be there because there's a five-year rule. So I phoned Bob Fulton, who was one of the original inductees. He'd retired for a year when he was and named. Was in. And was in. So I don't know where that's... Maybe David can help me there. But... Uh, look, it won't matter whether it's Norm Proven, Ron Coote, uh, whether it's uh, Joey Johns or Mal Meninga or anyone else. They'll all be very worthy and there'll be debates in pubs and clubs about how wrong we got it. Mm. It's going to be a very difficult decision. I'm not quite sure how we're going to arrive at the decision. There'll be plenty of debate, I'd imagine, and plenty of arguments. And then at the end of the day, a decision will be reached on the 8th Immortal. Yeah, well, look, another judge, David Middleton. I mean, can you give us an insight? What are you thinking at the moment? Well, it's hard. Look, I, there's, there's so many v worthy contenders, if you say. We didn't mention, I, I think, Peter Sterling's another one. Um, mm. Alfie Lango, you said. Uh, there are so many worthy contenders. And look, I'm going to be choosing the player I think is the best player that I, I, I've seen in the last 30 years. But... I will be canvassing opinion of a lot of people as well. It's, it's about opinions of lots of people involved in the game. There are 13 judges. We'll get together at a dinner and we'll talk about who's worthy, who's not, who should be, who shouldn't be. And at the end of that, we'll cast our votes by secret ballot. Nathan Highmarsh, Brad Fittler comes to mind for me as well. I mean, there are so many. There's probably a list of eight to ten you could go yeah, for. Yeah, there is. But I think that the hard thing for myself is, you know, I haven't seen everyone play. You know, that's, that's up for nomination. You know, first of... You know, I would have mentioned Freddie. You know, Andrew yeah. Johns is obviously up there. Mm. Um, for me, I like Mal Meninga. You know, watching him grow up as a young bloke, watching what he did for Australia, captaining his country and all that type of stuff. So if it was up to me, I'd, I'd be seriously thinking of Mal or, or someone like Andrew Johns. Yeah. Benji is a Kiwi. You'd have your own take on the Immortals. Yeah, well, guys like Stacey Jones come to mind for myself, even guys like Steve Kearney. But for me, as a, as a younger sort of player, um, I didn't get to see a lot of these players play either. And um, yeah, it's very hard for me to say when I haven't seen a lot of them play. But I've got a few questions. Like, as a judge, how, how do you decide? Is it based on playing talent alone? Is it what they've done off the field? I mean, for the people out there, we yeah. don't really understand well, those things. Well, the criteria includes what they've done on the playing field, and that's been laid down by the founding fathers, including the late Frank Hyde, who said in 81, we can't judge what people do away from rugby league. It has to be about what they do on the rugby league field. And Wayne Bennett and Ian Heads, two of the other judges, have confirmed that today in Rugby League Week. So, sometimes you wish that, that applied in life as well. But, well, yeah, but, and, and, but you see, I think human nature, Daryl, dictates that, that's, you know, I mean, it would be hard to determine a player to be an immortal if he had disgraced himself immeasurably off the foot. I don't know yeah. what the measure is. Yeah, well, I agree with that. I don't think too many people do know, Ray. I mean, I would imagine they would have told you guys who are on the board what the criteria is. And if that's the criteria, I've got to say... In my time, Andrew Johns would get my nod. Yeah. Uh, I didn't see enough of Norm Proven. Uh, in saying that, Norm Proven's record is remarkable. I think he won 10 grand finals yeah. with the Dragons. With the Dragons. Um, and I think he, ca he captain coached in four of them. With, with, yeah, without being disrespectful. That was in a row as well. Yeah, wasn't yeah it? without, without that being phase. disrespectful, we do have an, an age range there yeah. uh, from younger people to older people. Um, and of course, Rabs is part of it, and he saw Norm Proven play in the early part of his broadcasting career. Mm. Um, and obviously, Ian Heads has been right across this for many, many years. And I'm, I started broadcasting in '87, so I'm more in the vogue of uh, Mal Meninga and Andrew what? Johns. I saw a little bit of Ron Coote. What, what, why does it have to be only one player, though? Why does well, it, that's the that was why, my next why question. Why is it the only eight? Is well, it? they've decided that it, the time is right to induct another immortal, and they, it's, it's rugby league. Has, weeks. But has four. there always been one per no, year? No, originally there were four. 
Then there was the next two. Next call there were two. Well, why can't? Uh, and then one. Why can't they do the same? Well, we I mean, might do that, that because there might be plenty of arguments. They might say we can't split these two. Do you guys debate the issue over a round table, or do you put like three, two, one in, or how do you? Well, I'm going to argue with Rabs, even if we agree. Well, he's easy to argue with. Exactly. Like golf on a Monday. But, but uh, you yeah. know, you're the stats man. I mean, you wading through all the stats. I looked at the stats before the show, and and they're all pretty equal. Oh, th it's hard to uh, to argue with with the claims of somebody like Mal Meninga, 46 Test matches, and he played for 15 years at the top level. I mean, his contribution in that area alone puts him right up there. But then you look at what Andrew Johns has done, how he made other players great players as well. Um, everyone's got a great claim. Yeah. There's no doubt about that. That's what's going to make it tricky. All right, 20 seconds to go. Let's at this stage. Go for a vote, Hindy. Oh, you you don't qualify oh, for 20, uh, what I'm going to say, 12, I'm going to say Mal Meninga. No, right, I, give us I, an insight. No, I can't. I, Come on, mate. I'll, I'll narrow it down to four: Norm Proven, Ron Coote, Mal Meninga, or Joey Johns. All right, I'm happy with that, Mido. I'm with Ray on that one. <laughs> of course, Benji. Well, I missed out Ruben Wiki. I think it's been great for New Zealand as well, and Stacey Jones. Big man. Andrew Johns. Andrew, Andrew Johns, Johns you said that in your first little spiel. There you go, Fatty. It's uh, going to be a tough decision, but the worthy contenders, there's about eight to ten of them, I reckon. Back to you. Yeah.